Welcome, everybody, to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today. And this week sees the release of the comedic drama Friendsgiving hitting store shelves along with Black Lightning Seasons 2 and 3. A very unique and interesting documentary called Wolfman's Got Nards! And Arrow Video is releasing a collector's edition Blu-ray of the 1984 sci-fi adventure classic, The Last Starfighter, plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we're at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, everybody, we are in at Walmart, and, well, truth be told, guys, there is really nothing new to show off this week whatsoever. Uh, seriously, they have no new releases that came out this week. None whatsoever, man. I mean, they do have sort of the Back to the Future stuff that they were supposed to have last week. They finally got in, thank God. The same with Tr Tremors, Shrieker Island the Tremor 7 movie collection and some of the indie stuff, The Vanished and Cutthroat City as well. I'm glad they got it in, but I will admit, man, that I'm seeing that they don't have the 4K, right? They just have the Blu-ray digital, but what really pisses me off about this is they have this, that spider claw stuff that, that, that grapples onto this. I understand why they do it because it's it's for security reasons, and they don't want people to steal it, and I understand it. It makes sense. But if you see this, guys, look, 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 look at this. It completely, completely just... Man, it ruined the entire packaging, man. The packaging is completely ruined now. It's just done. Like, you just fucked up the packaging by doing this. And it just kills me, because as somebody who's a huge collector and loves... The packaging and artwork of movies and, and releases and everything, this really just sad, saddens me, frustrates me, pisses me off. Like, I just don't understand why stores can't find a better way to, to do this stuff. Kind of like with the, with this. This is a better way. It's not the most foolproof way, but it's a, it's a good way. But this, oh, God. The dreaded spider claws, man, that pisses me off so, so much. Man, this packaging is ruined now. For 30 bucks, like, yeah, it's now not even worth the third 30 bucks with the spider claw on it that really sucks man and with the tremors Tr shrieker island thing with this with this seven movie collection i kind of wanted to say it real quick is that out of the seven films I, i'm really only a fan of probably as i said three of them i think last week i was really a fan of Tremors, I love. Tremors is a goddamn classic. It's an amazing movie. I love that film <laughs> to, to death, practically. Great flick, man. Just great horror co comedy in that. The monsters are cool. Tremors 2, honestly, is a really good one. I really like... I kind of wish Kevin Bacon was in it, but Fred Ward being the main star in it, I like sort of the new Tremors that they brought into it. I thought it was really cool, man. I really like, like that, that a lot. Uh, Tremors 3 um, is okay. I think that's one I, I kind of like. Uh, Tremors 4 and 5, not so much. I'm not a huge fan of it. But Tremors 6, though, I actually thought was pretty decent. The, the, the franchise is very kind of up and down, kind of wishy-washy. Uh, most of them are not that great. But if you're a fan of monster movies, then Tremors is kind of kind of a good way to scratch that itch i would say but the franchise is very inconsistent well let's be real most franchises are fairly inconsistent children of corn and hellraiser and halloween and a lot of other franchises so tremors is not exactly alone in that regard but it might be better than some of the other ones well especially something like hellraiser or children of the corn which is some of the really bad movies this doesn't go quite in that t territory they're not so great at times, but not, like, complete shit quality. But, well, they're, they're d decent films, though. But if you get into them, my preference is definitely one and two for sure, man. Interesting. 
I mean, again, no major new releases over in this section, but hey, at least they had the stuff from last week, which, uh, this time last week, they did not have any of this stuff either, so at least this is kind of an improvement. I mean, is there any of the indie stuff at least? And then over on this side, guys, I hate to say it, but there is no other new indie titles this week that is out here at this Walmart either. All the same old stuff here as well. Nothing new on the indie front either. But there's a couple things I was noticing that I was kind of just interested in me as being an old school fan of them. And one was actually batteries not included. The DVD for $374, which by the way is a great price for, for a DVD. And what great artwork, man. I really love this movie. And I was just sort of scanning the section and I came across this. And my God, man, this is great. I actually watched this on VHS. My mother and father actually taped this movie on VHS and I saw it when I was a kid. Not directed by Steven Spielberg, but it's one of those sort of Steven Spielberg Presents films that he did a lot in sort of the 80s and 90s. Such a really fantastic movie, man. Really great. About these people in this apartment that they're trying to get pushed out or evicted and these aliens sort of come down and sort of help them out. It's sort of this heartwarming family drama in a lot of ways. And I love the designs of the aliens, very mechanical. Almost looked like they were made out of like spare parts or something like, like it it was a cool designs it was sort of one of those friendly sort of alien movies kind of like et or, or something it was kind of heartwarming you liked it but it's not a movie that's as well remembered as something like et is i don't know if people remember batteries not included as much as i wish they would it's a really good movie man if you like et you might enjoy this it's not as iconic as E.T., but I think it's pretty good, man. 74, not bad. Again, that artwork's great, man. I love that artwork. And the other thing I'm seeing over here that I hadn't seen over here before, actually, is the DVD of Trailer Park Boys, the complete first and second s seasons. Now, I gotta admit to you guys, I, I mean, I've heard of Trailer Park Boys... I've never actually seen an episode. Actually, actually, now that I think about it, that's not entirely true. I think I did see one episode of Trailer Park Boys a long time back, man. And it was good. I mean, I didn't mind it. It had some funny parts to it. But I, I didn't really get into it as a lot of people got into Trailer Park Boys. It's a really popular show. I mean, it has its fan base. People do love it. I thought it was decent. I, I mean... It sort of plays on sort of mocking sort of like hillbillies and sort of um, sort of redneck culture in a lot of ways, I would say. It kind of does. Like I said, I, I heard a lot of people have really enjoyed it, and the episode that I saw wasn't terrible. I'm As far as like TV shows or movies like mocking things, like culture or people... Uh, like, I've only liked a few things. Like, I, I've liked, like, th This is Spinal Tap, which sort of mocks the rock and roll culture. I like that. Or even a show like, like The Office that mocks sort of, you know, office work culture, stuff like that. That's what I've enjoyed. But not too much sort of mock mocking type of TV shows or movies or mockumentary style stuff that I really enjoy. But this... I mean, again, like, I've heard good things, and again, the episode that I saw wasn't terrible, but it was not something I would easily would get into, mostly. I know they are having a third se season, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Doesn't look half bad, though. Pretty decent and interesting. Trailer Park Boys. All right. Hmm. So, I guess that does it for the Walmart location. I mean, there's only a couple things worth, at least I thought, checking out. I mean, mind you, they still have this horror section over here, which is massively depleted. And, wow, man, just crazy empty. That hasn't been refilled. And then all of the other media that we've seen before, like I said, nothing terribly new or all that interesting. All the same indie titles, not restocked on any of the new stuff there. And 
none of the new releases either over in this section so yeah nothing really new to show off this week whatsoever unfortunately for walmart yeah i hate to say it guys but i will say the say this though if you guys ever want to actually show off a tv at the at your store show off the special feature screen for space jam Apparently, if you want to buy a, a Roku TV, the best way to promote it is through the special sc feature screen on on the Roku TV. For some reason, that'll get them to buy it. Really? Space Jam? And the menu screen of all things? Well, I've seen weirder, I guess. Okay. I guess that attracts the kids to buy the 20 some odd inch TV. Okay, sure, I guess, man. Uh, all right, well, Space Jam of all things. All right, well, other than that, I guess that does it. All of the wonderful and interesting media that we've seen many, many times before. All right, well, it is what it is, guys, this week. All right, how about we head out? In all honesty, guys, this is a really slow release week compared to the last few that we've actually had, man. And there's not like one huge major release that everybody is going to have. Like like one that is like the huge popular release of the week. It's more a lot of really smaller releases and a lot of unknown titles. And then there's a lot of like schmaltzy indie stuff that some of these stores just aren't carrying so yeah unfortunately i don't know really what this week's gonna have in store for us i was almost positive that we weren't really gonna see much at this walmart because of what this week is and i was pretty much proven right i mean at least they had some of the stuff from last week but uh that probably should have been out last week but whatever though i mean it is what it is unless it's a really big plentiful week I mean, this Walmart has surprised me from time to time, but uh, most of the time, it's pretty predictable. And this week, well, with it being not a lot of releases, easily predictable, man. Uh, I don't know what we're going to find this week. We could still see a lot of surprises, but this time around, well, no surprise at all. Well, it is what it is, obviously. Well, let's see what else we can possibly find at the next location. All right, everybody, we are at our second location, Target. Now, before we go in, I wanted to just briefly say something real quick, right? So I was at the first Walmart location, and before I was about to leave, one of the Walmart employees comes up to me, and he says, oh, can I help you find a anything? And I was right in the media section, and I was like, no. No, I'm I'm good, thank you very much. And then he asked this woman. And this woman says, yeah, you can help me. I'm looking for this show, or I didn't quite hear what the show was on DVD and Blu-ray. And he was kind of looking at the media section, and uh, I don't, it, it doesn't look like it's here. And she's like, well, it, I have seen it here. I just wasn't interested in getting it at that point, but now I am, and now you guys don't have it. And I thought to myself, I said, well, the reason why they don't got it is because they lowered the physical media section, and now they're now you're just shit out of luck, lady. Sorry, but it's the honest to God truth. And, and I was just thinking to myself, I, I'm like, you know, so many people are complaining. So many people say, well, you know, all of this stuff is going online now. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that woman now has to literally go online. Walmart.com, Amazon.com, BestBuy.com, Target.com, whatever. She's got to go on all these websites to try to find the movie she's looking for. And then it's got to ship to her and whatnot. Oh, well, why is it all going online? Because these stores are not filling up the media. They are lowering the media section. And this is why. Okay? Now, you have no idea how many times I have literally had conversations with employees of some of these stores. 
And they're like, well, well, no one's buying physical media. No one's buying it. We're just, it's just sitting there. And I'm like, because you're not promoting it. You're lowering the physical media section down so much that it's just getting swallowed up by everything else. That's why. I mean, come on, man. I, I'm, I mean, of course these stores are seeing bad sales at times because you're literally forcing everybody to go online now. And look, I do a lot of online media shopping. I do because, quite frankly, the stuff that I buy, more or less, is never in the stores. Really not, because I get a lot of really niche stuff that these stores just simply don't carry. But even a lot of the popular stuff, you don't see anymore. I mean, you see it for a few weeks here and there, and then it's completely gone, swallowed up. A lot of these stores are not good at restocking anymore, and it seems like overall they've kind of given up a little bit. Now, now, look, I still love doing the out and abouts every single week for you guys, and I still love showing off the media, whatever there is, I love showing it off. But look, I'm going to keep it real for you guys. I'm going to be real here and say that, that physical media, as far as these stores are concerned, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting a losing battle, but they're fighting a losing battle with themselves. I mean, that's the truth. I mean... Last week, I showed you both of those Walmarts that literally have shrinked in size for the physical media. I showed you the same thing with Target. And to me, when I hear the complaint about, well, they're not buying physical media, I go back to, well, what are you doing as a store to support physical media enough where people want to buy it? I mean, because you have no idea. I see people coming into these stores, looking at the shelves, looking for a title, and they just can't find it. And then they leave disappointed, they leave frustrated, and they may not come back to check out the media because you've let them down maybe once or twice. And why come back when you probably realize that you're going to be disappointed yet again? And might as well go online. That's why places like Amazon have have become as popular as they have and you know us online shopping has ruled the day because these in stores just aren't doing the due diligence now of course it is slightly getting better at times there are certain stores that get a lot of great media and i love to talk about those places but then there's other ones that really unfortunately are not doing their job I mean, look, I get it in some ways with the coronavirus. It's been tough this year, and, you know, it, it's it just, unfortunately for retail, it's been really tough. But at the end of the day, man, it's, you just have to support. Thing. You can't just go ahead and say, well, no one's buying physical media. Because I go to these stores constantly and I see people buying stuff. You just have to order smart. You have to know what's going to sell. You have to see the trends. And, and you have to put it out where people are going to notice it. This, th this is retail 101. You would think people would know that, but... Well... Shit, they don't, man. I mean, what, what do you want to say? They don't. So, yeah, I I see the arguments, and I see people being disappointed, and I see what that woman went through when, when I was about to leave that Walmart and thinking to myself, like, this is why nobody is buying physical media at some of these retail stores, because when you shrink the media down so much... And you don't know what is going to sell. And you don't put out the right stuff. Nobody is going to want to buy it. You have to show off the media. You have to not continue to shrink it. That it's such a micro a micro thing. That no one's going to even want to even go near it. And you have to know it sells. Simple as that. And if you do that, people will buy it. But you got to be smart. got to be smart, man. 
These places got to be smarter, man. They really on honestly do. I mean, let me know what you guys think about this. Have you seen some of the trends? What is your opinions of this? What should they do better? Let me know, man. In the meantime, well, boy, this week, uh, <laughs> well, the first Walmart really had not nothing, and it is a slow release week, so God knows what the hell we're going to see at this Target, man. Probably nothing, but, uh, geez, I hope something. Well, I mean, the only way to find out is to go in, so, uh, I guess we should check it out. All right, everybody, we are in at Target, and can you believe that they have no new releases this week whatsoever? Yep, I think you can take a wild guess that that was probably not going to happen, guys. No new releases at all. I will say this, though, that that uh, Back to the Future exclusive did sell, which is nice. And, of course, they still have... All of the only at Target exclusive steelbook for the Twilight series. Wait a minute. That didn't sell out? Oh my god, I'm so shocked. Twilight didn't sell out. Somebody call an ambulance. Somebody call 911. I'm going to have a heart attack. Oh lord. Yes, that is still here, guys. And again, there is no new releases over in this section whatsoever. There's no new releases over here. The same stuff that we've been we've been seeing. Or here it looks like the same stuff on the back side as well. No new major revelations over here and all of that wonderful Disney goodness on one shelf for all the kitties. All the same stuff that we've seen before. No crazy new interesting movies here at Target. I'm not really shocked, to be honest with you guys. Not really shocked at all. But is there something we can see here? At least something we haven't seen yet? And I think we are seeing something over here that we haven't seen yet. Now I'm over in this section, which is just a small area for like value movies. But I'm seeing they have these 10 film collections of best of the 80s, best of the 90s, and best of the double zeros for $44.99. Now, we have been seeing a little bit some, some sort of 10 film collections as of recent. Like, I showed you the Tom Cruise one and Andy Murphy one, and they had the Blumhouse thing. So now there's, like, one that's, are like, the official, like film collection ones very interesting this is the 10 film collection best of the 80s volume 2 okay so there was a volume 1 but now we are on to the volume 2's here alright what do they got in this 10 iconic films from the 80's so we got the Goonies iconic agree Batman okay iconic Beetlejuice the color purple Mm, color purple iconic to the 80s maybe it's a great film so maybe the never ending story okay iconic uh poltergeist okay definitely iconic the outsiders the outsiders is a really good movie i love the outsiders is the outsiders iconic as a film to the 80s possibly it is possible. Okay, you got that. You got National Lampoon's Vacation. Iconic. You've got Gremlins, of course. Very iconic. And you've got Little Shop of Horrors. I would say iconic. Not bad. Okay, this, this is a good list. This is a really good, solid 10 film collection best of 80s list, I would say. It is. It's not like the most iconic of them because this is volume 2. Apparently, Volume 1, there was probably some more iconic stuff, I would imagine. But for a Volume 2, this isn't bad. Most of them, I would say, are iconic. There's a couple that are maybe a little bit questionable. But for the most part, this is a good, solid l list on this one. I would say it is. I would say that has a very good, s solid list. Then, on to the best of 90s, which I'm very curious of what's going to be iconic on this one. Because... I was born in the 80s, but I'm definitely a child of the 90s, for, for sure. So I am interested to see what are we going to see on the best of 90s 10 film collection here. We got The Matrix, okay, iconic. Dumb and Dumber, iconic. The Shawshank Redemption, okay, iconic. Friday, 
Okay, I would say Friday's iconic. You got The Mask. Very good film. Iconic? Okay, yeah, I would say that. Goodfellas, easily iconic. Austin Powers, the first one. Okay. The Wedding Singer. Is is The Wedding Singer... Okay, I, I guess The Wedding Singer would be iconic to the 90s. Okay. I guess that would make, make sense. Uh, Rush Hour and then Unforgiven. Unforgiven easily is... I guess Rush Hour is iconic. I never really thought of Rush Hour as sort of iconic 90s, but I guess when you boil it down, it is iconic, and so would be Unforgiven. So actually, honestly, that's a, not a bad list. It is. Would those... Honestly, I'm going to ask you guys, when you look at this list, are those the first films to come to mind when you think of 90s iconic? I'm curious. Some of them do, but some of them... I don't know, man. I don't know if some of them really scream like the first round of like best of 90s. Like, if this was volume 2, maybe? But the first volume? Not sure, man. Huh. Definitely let, let me know. I think it's a good list, though. I do. Not bad. And then, the best of the double zeros, which I'm definitely very interested to see what is going to be on, on this list. Because, to, to be honest with you guys, look, there is so much great iconic stuff from the 80s. There's a lot of really great iconic stuff from the 90s. But is there as much iconic stuff from the double zeros? Well, I guess we're about to find out. <laughs> So, what is in this list, man? So, we got The Hangover. Okay, I would say The Hangover is definitely iconic. I, I would say that. Okay, we're off to a good start. Ocean's Eleven. Would Ocean's Eleven be iconic? I guess it's a movie that's very well known, very well respected, very popular. I guess I, I guess so. You have The Departed, which I would say is very I iconic. Okay. You've got The Blind Side. Is The Blind Side iconic? It's a popular movie. A lot of people like it. Iconic? I don't know, man. That, that, that That's a tough one. It might be. Might. Then you've got Best in Show, which is a great film. I love Best in Show. Great comedy. But is it is it iconic? That, that that would be another questionable one. Great film. Hard to say iconic. Uh, I Am Legend. I Am Legend is not iconic. I, I'm going to push back on I Am Legend. I like the movie, but that's not iconic, man. Million Dollar Baby. Really great movie. Could it be iconic? Possibly. Letters from Iwo Jima. Great movie, but Letters from Iwo Jima is not iconic. I wouldn't put that in iconic status. I really wouldn't. Uh, then you've got A History of Violence, which is a good movie, but I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it iconic. And Mystic River, which is another really great movie, but again, is it iconic? I, I guess the real question is, what really makes an iconic movie? Is really the, the truth to all this, guys, because at the end of the day, everybody views iconic status different from other people. Which is the which is the truth? Like like me, I would think of something iconic as something very classic and and lasting a long time, and it's been in in the in in the audience's consciousness for many 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 years, and still remains that way. Still remains in sort of in some sort of pop culture status. Like that's my general consensus with with something iconic. But everybody has a different definition of it. The problem with the double zeros, or even in the in the 2010s, is that were there any films in these in both of those decades that would equal the iconic status of something from the 80s or the 90s? I don't really think it's so, man. I don't really, I don't think so at all, man. I mean, there are some really great films in the double zeros. I mean, there's some great ones. A lot of these movies are great, but are they iconic? That's tough, man. That really honestly is tough. Like I said, I like a lot of these films, but it's hard to rank in the iconic status de department, especially when you're comparing it to 80s and 90s. Like, this doesn't hold a candle to that, man. 
it's very tough. We always talk about sort of best of the 80s and 90s, but I very rarely see any best of like the double zeros or the 2010s that I can really agree on. Definitely let me know. And does and does these 10 film collection actually please you guys as far as the films are concerned? Or do you think they fell way short? Definitely let me know, guys. You do have this, at least we saw that. And the other thing I'm seeing, which I know they had here last week, but I didn't show off, is that they did have that 300 4K, which came out a few weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. But they are carrying it here, which it probably looks really great in 4K, to be honest with you. It probably, probably looks awesome, man. The movie's decent. I'm not in love with 300 like everybody was. I remember when this film came out and everybody was, like, going ape shit over this movie like oh my god this movie's amazing it's like this is spa doll <laughs> they were going they were going crazy over this film and they loved it i think it was the stylization of the movie i think it was the ultra violence and you know just these roided up dudes these loincloth oiled up guys that are just like like kn knifing people and killing people and screaming and bloody terror <laughs> i guess it just it just it just was like yeah the, those were those were men back in the day baby <laughs> you're like okay but it, it it was very popular man and it launched gerard butler's career it's a good movie i kind of look back on it and it's not as iconic as i think everybody kind of says it is it's still good though but it probably looks really great in 4k man not not bad for all you 300 lovers and actually not a bad cover and the same on the inside as well not bad unfortunately that seems to be it man i mean uh, all the same stuff over here all the same stuff over there with all the marvel stuff uh same stuff in this section and this section as well yeah a lot of the same stuff unfortunately nothing really new or wowing anything at all unfortunately it's a shame but, uh, yeah, again, all the same stuff. All the same stuff here. All the same stuff there that I showed you guys before. <sighs> this is Target for you. And when it's a slow week, you know what that means, guys. All right. Well, hey, at least we tried. Let's head out. Okay, look, I'm not shocked, guys. <laughs> I'm really not, man. Like, I I was really hoping beyond hope that I'd be wrong. That I was like, okay, well, they, they, they may have one thing that's new. No. No, 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 no. No. <sighs> Unfortunately not, man. This, I, I, look, we've been to two locations. Both of them have been, frankly, a wash. So, I don't know where this out and about goes next. I don't know what thing new we'll actually see. It's kind of nice to see at least that, you know, that 10 film collection stuff. That was kind of cool. But other than that, yeah, not so much, man. But, uh, well, it is what it is. I think this week is just one of those weeks where you sit there and you're like, oh, hey, yeah, uh, the media on the low side side of things. I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope that the back half can be a little bit more pleasing as far as some of the new releases and things to talk about, but uh, these first two stores, a little on the weak sauce side. But um, hey, you never know. That's why we do the out and abouts, because things can turn around in, in an instant. Or not. Well, I guess we'll just have to find out, guys. How about we head to the next location and hopefully see a hell of a lot more than we've seen so far. All right, everybody, we are at our third location, the second Walmart. God, I hope we find something in here that we have not seen yet today. We'll have to find out. Uh, before we do, though, I gotta talk about a movie trailer with you guys, and it's kind of unique. It's a, it's an upcoming Netflix film, and it's called The Midnight Sky. Now, this one stars George Clooney, and I gotta admit, man, you know, what's really interesting about George Clooney is that he was this big-time actor, very popular, was making a ton of movies, a ton of TV, and he was just this big Hollywood star. 
And then over time, I've noticed with George Clooney is that he's actually steadily kind of lessened the workload a lot. Like he he's not working as much of an actor as he used to be. He's slowly been doing less and less work. I mean, the work that he does is really good when he ends up actually deciding to work on a project, but he's very picky and choosy now, and I'm okay with that. I just it was kind of, it's something that you don't see all the time. Usually just big actors they just continue to work and they continue to do it and eventually they sort of run out of steam or fail enough times and then they get kicked out by Hollywood. But George Clooney's a little bit di different than that. He sort of is more picky and choosy now, doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff more than in front of the camera. But this time around, he is in front of the camera and this is very interesting. So basically it's about this guy who is trying to contact this spaceship in, in outer space that I'm assuming has left to try to save humanity, but then something has happened on Earth that is incredibly terrible, and he is trying to contact them so that they do not come down to Earth. He's trying to warn them about the conditions that is going on. And it's sort of like, you know... Both sides are losing hope and trying to still believe that, that you know, that each other is out there and that they're still alive and that, you know, th that even though the hope is dying, that there's still a little bit of hope left. And it's a very unique and interesting sort of little m movie. I mean, I like it. I like sort of George Clooney and this little girl that I'm assuming his daughter and that they're kind of two people that, you know, the the girl is trusting him. He's trying to he's trying to protect her, but at the same time trying to maybe, you know, try to contact these people and and trying to find hope in a very hopeless situation. On the other side you have these these astronauts, these people in outer space in in the in the ship that that are trying to contact the the outpost that is trying to find out what's going on on earth it's been a few weeks they don't know if these people are still alive they don't know what's going on and they're just right now in in limbo so it's the two sides struggling with the communication aspect and i thought it was really unique and interesting i like the sci-fi aspects i like the drama it kind of reminds me of almost like the day after tomorrow meets gravity. It kind of does. It has a very unique, interesting flavor. I like sort of George Clooney's really long beard. Like, he's been there for a long time, man, and clearly there is no shaving products. So, it kind of has a post-apocalyptic natural disaster feel with sort of a space exploration movie. It's got some good vibes to it. The acting seems really good. I like the high intensity. I like the hopelessness. I think this can be a good one, man. It's not very showy and action-y. It's not, you know, like a Roland Emmerich movie or something. But I think it could be a really good little, very interesting sci-fi drama flick. I think it does. And George Clooney's a really good actor, and the projects he's picking, when he does pick them, I think he does a good job, man. So, this one could be unique. I don't know whether this was supposed to come to theaters or not. I don't know if this is another case of, like, the coronavirus and a studio was just selling off the movie. It's possible. But, damn, it looks good, man. And so, I'm on board. I, the visuals look great. They uh, they look stunning and haunting. I I'm on board. The the visual effects look cool. So yeah, looks like a really good one. And I like some good space exploration sort of sci-fi movies. I really do. This one could be a winner, guys. It looks really good. And definitely let me know what you think of that trailer. In the meantime, well, let's head into the second Walmart. Man, this has been a bust. We haven't really seen anything, and God knows what we'll see here. But um. Guess we'll just go and find out. All right, guys, I am in at the second Walmart location and I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm gonna be very honest with you right now. 
they are so wiped full of product. I mean, they literally have nothing to show off. And I mean nothing, guys. The front location, <laughs> that's really bad, man. That is totally, I mean, nothing is there. Literally nothing, it's completely wiped. Holy shit, man. And the side area is getting pretty bad too. Yeah, that's pretty rough, man. I mean, literally nothing new to show off. This Walmart doesn't even have the Back to the Future stuff, man, at all. And not even really the Tremor stuff. They didn't even get any of that stuff. And this is the second Walmart that usually has way better selection than the first location that I go to. And at least the first location has Tremors and Back to the Future. Wow, man, this place literally has nothing, man. I am so shocked by this, dude. I really honestly am. It's, it blows my mind, dude. I mean, usually the second Walmart is so much better than this, but really not this time around, man, which is a real shame. I mean, they do have, you know, some of the stuff, but these are a lot of older titles and all this stuff. But other than that, they got nothing. It's a freaking dead zone in here, man. A real shame, but yeah. I was hoping for a little bit better, but... Man, this week is rough, I think, for every place. Yeah, sorry guys, but this place is a bust as well. I mean, man, on top of that, the Fly Collection, that's sold too. I mean, I understand it because, I mean, it's the Fly Collection, of course it's sold, but, I mean, hell, they even ran out of that, man. They're running out of a lot of stuff, man. And this, 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 this Walmart location is really getting rough, dude. Hope they change it around, but this week, bad, man. Well, it's, uh, O for three. Let's hope the fourth location has some luck. We interrupt this video for some late-breaking news. More Walmart drama? <laughs> I, yes, more Walmart drama, guys. Look, I don't go out of my way to have drama. It just happens. I swear to you guys. So, just after filming at the second location, at the second Walmart, I was ready to pack it up and go, because I was like, okay, there was nothing there, and guess who stops me? The assistant manager who told me to get out the first time, okay? She was there with another younger female employee. I assume it's another assistant manager or somebody else. I guess they wanted somebody there in case maybe I was hostile or something. I, I have no idea, man. But both of them were there, and both of them confronted me, and they said, look, uh, we talked to you before. You cannot film at the second location. You can't do it. And we talked to the store manager, and the store manager has said, hey, uh, you can't film. Sorry. Uh, not allow, allow, allowed to, or I will be kicked out. So, here's the gist of it, guys. Now, the Walmart policy about people filming is actually manager discretion. It's basically up to the store manager to say whether you are allowed to film or not allowed to film. Now, that's why I have a very easy time at the first Walmart location filming like I do because I've talked to the store manager, we've talked, we've, you know, have an understanding, and it's all good for the most part. But this store manager, she really doesn't like me. And I mean really. I don't know what I did, guys. I don't know if I... If I pissed in her cereal, if I shit on her lawn, like, 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 uh, seriously, I have no idea, man. Um, but she does not like me, man. And, and, again, what I don't understand is that you would think this is promotion for Walmart. It's promotion for the brand, for the stores to say, hey, look, this is what they have. And, yeah, when they have a bad week, I will point it out, just like I have in the video here. I'm going to point it out because I'm not going to mince words here. I'm going to be honest. Because I've always told you guys that I'm going to be honest with you. And so I'm, I'm just not going to mince words. You know, but she just doesn't like me filming. She, I don't, she thinks it's a violation or something and, and I'm doing something terrible or wrong. 
again, I'm not filming customers. I'm not filming employees. I'm not vandalizing property. I'm not stealing. Uh, anything like that. But apparently, I am public enemy number one. I seem to always be public enemy number one now, don't I? Uh, but yes, guys. So... What I'm going to do from now on, as I've sort of told you guys before, because in previous weeks I took the DVDs and Blu-rays home with me here, and then I filmed them here showing you the titles, talking about them, and then bringing them back to Walmart. So that's what I'm going to do from now on. I'm still going to try to film in that second Walmart from time to time, just me sort of talking and saying, hey, there's a few titles here worth checking out. Or, hey, there's nothing here, and then I cut back to home, and we just lo look at the media, the media, and I'll tell you the prices and all that jazz. Uh, this is how it's going to have to be, guys. Uh, again, um, in fact, what's crazy enough, actually, is that now the first time when that assistant manager came up to me, I told you guys that she was incredibly rude to me. She was yelling at me. She was berating me. This time around, actually, she was really nice, honestly. I mean, swear to God, she was actually just very soft-spoken, approached me in a non-threatening way, and was just very easygoing with me, which was totally the opposite of what she was before. And she even said that she got complaints that came in from Walmart. So the complaint that I put in, the complaints that you guys had put in as well to walmart.com or 1-800-WALMART, they actually got to the store. So it actually, I, well, I won't say it made a difference because clearly I can't film in that second location, but actually what it did was, I, I guess, kind of reinforce that there is a, a fan base out there of people like you who are passionate about this channel who actually went out of their way to to send a message to them, and they got them, guys. So that's great. Unfortunately, doesn't help in the long run. Hate to say it, but this is how corporate world works. They don't want to have uh, somebody show off the media, even though, like I said, I'm not getting paid by Walmart or any of these stores. I, I don't get any promotional stuff from them. I... I'm basically doing this free of my own time, of my own gas money, because I love showing off the media. And unfortunately, YouTube, actually I think with YouTube, to be honest with you, there has been a lot of things where it's been either, uh, you know, the people of Walmart videos or, you know, people fighting in Walmart or doing pranks. And I think all of that, all of those bad apples eventually ruined good YouTubers like myself and many others who who are not out to hate on anybody or do anything bad. We just wanted to show off the media and unfortunately we get caught in the crossfire. And that's what happens. And look, I've tried to talk with with uh, the manager at that second Walmart. I've tried to I tried tried to appeal to her and there's no appealing to her whatsoever, guys. There's literally nothing I can do at this point. And I wish I could. I wish I could literally talk to that manager and say, hey, look, you can review the footage that I do. Uh, you know, you can even have a rep representative be right next to me if you want while I film. I don't care. I'm fine with it. I I'm cool with whatever. But unfortunately, not the case, man. And so it's just, it's, it's out of my hands, out of my control. But that's what I'm going to do from now on, guys. So any extra, any extra movies or anything that that second Walmart has, I will come home and, fil and film it. I've already done it uh, for a couple weeks, but uh, there hasn't been really anything to show off, so I kind of backed off of that, but now it's back on. So I want to let you guys know what's going to happen from now on in the videos going forward with that second Walmart. Again, not my doing, man. I, I want to film in there. I want to film. I want to show you guys the media and then be on my way. But uh, this manager and all of the other people, they just don't like me. I've told you guys that multiple times, and some of you have been like, well, I don't think they really hate you. I mean, it looks like they don't. You're filming in there. Look, every time I filmed in that second Walmart, I've literally always had to look over my shoulder because I never knew who was coming or what was going to happen or if I was going to get in, in trouble. And, well, now you guys know why. So, 
going forward, that's what will happen. But I just wanted to let you guys know. I want to keep it real with you guys. So that's what's going on. But um, if we don't see much of the second Walmart anymore and I'm always filming the movies at home, well, now you get the complete picture. All right. Hope you guys understand. Sorry for the, the in interruption. The video itself has been, well, unfortunately, not a lot of media to show off. But that is going to change. I promise. But, uh, ah, more Walmart drama. Never ends. All right, guys. Back to the video. All right, we are in at Best Buy, and it looks like we're actually seeing something here. Not really a new release exactly. Well, well, last week it was. And that is the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Digital only at Best Buy exclusive Steelbook edition, baby. I cannot believe we're seeing this. This is so cool, man. $64.99 is the price. And look at this bad boy, man. Oh, my God. Very different from this cover right here. I actually really like this cover, man. If you kind of see it, it's got Marty in the present day. It's got Biff, who is in the future and it's got doc brown that's in the old wild west version very nice look at that oh my god and the wonderful luscious steel books right here look at that oh so cool that is nice oh that's so good man look at that sweet and they kind of look like this right on on the inside man so it's all with the delorean but the delorean is in pieces but in different time periods oh that's so cool look at that oh my god dude after last week when i did not see it here and they told me that it sold out really quick and they didn't get many copies i thought that we would never see this in stores i literally thought okay we're this is just a lost cause we're never gonna see this and i am so happy to be wrong look at this this is so cool man i'm so happy i got to see this look at this steelbook love man oh so good so so good oh my god i i've i've told you how much i love this trilogy and i i really do man it, this this trilogy is timeless the great acting the great storytelling the visual effects the the classic and and timeless and memorable characters everything about this is amazing and this is an awesome set I mean, the steel books look really cool. The box looks awesome. I gotta admit, the box here at this Best Buy, though, it does look a little bit beat up. Like, there is some, like, dented in corners and everything. It looks kind of rough. But, honestly, I could just probably order this online or something, and it'd be fine. But, because I might get a better one. Because I think people have kind of handled this quite, quite a bit. So, it's now kind of a little dented, dented in and messed up. But... Dude, if you love Back to the Future, if you love Steelbooks, and I know so many of you do, this is an amazing addition. My God, dude, that is awesome. It is so awesome to see this. Like I said, I was not prepared to actually see it in the actual store, but just seeing it in person, it looks fucking gorgeous, man. And again, I've heard nothing but good things about the 4K, so it looks absolutely stunning, most likely. And again, the Steelbooks are beautiful baby oh my god so cool to see that that was a real really surprise i didn't think we were actually going to see this man but just go goes to show that sometimes they may not have it on release week but patience does pay off full proof on that one baby not bad other than that some of the same stuff that we've seen over here same same stuff as usual not nothing really crazy but again so cool to see that back to the future trilogy steelbook set very very cool man not bad at all well let's hope there's more to see and then over on this side guys i'm seeing a couple of releases worth talking about and actually one is literally staring me right in the goddamn face holy shit guys i can't believe i'm seeing it wow uh <laughs> Holy shit, the Rambo 4K Complete Steelbook Collection. I believe this is the Steelbook Collection for a $94.99, pretty much $95. Bucks. Look at this thing. 
Holy shit. This thing is massive. Wow, man, look at this. Let me see if I can try to pick this thing up. Wow. Wow, this thing is gigantic, man. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. The art over there. Wow. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That is sweet. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. oh so good. Oh, my God. Let's see about, about the steel books. Oh, man. Look at that. First Blood, First Blood Part 2, Rambo 3, Rambo, and Rambo Last Blood. Look at that. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, so cool. Look at that. And I believe this is actually, one of these is actually like, it's, it's, I believe it's like a tin set, actually. It's like in a tin. It's not like a flimsy plastic or anything. It's like the tin. Oh, that's really cool, man. Look at that. Oh, that is so awesome. I actually didn't think we were actually going to see it this week. I mean, I know it came out this week, but I totally didn't think we were actually going to see it. Oh, man. Oh, this is nice. This is, as I would probably say with anything I really love, like, this is tasty. <laughs> this is definitely tasty. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, man, that's so awesome that they have this set, man. This is, this is amazing. Wow. Uh, dude, look at that. Rambo. Oh, that is so awesome. God damn, man. This is like a Best Buy exclusive, I believe, man. They make some really great Best Buy exclusives. Holy shit. Dude. Okay, so you want to know what, man? I do really enjoy the Rambo series. I don't love the Rambo series, to be honest with you guys, but I do really enjoy it, man. The first Rambo film, First Blood, is absolutely classic. It's an amazing, absolutely amazing Rambo movie. It's, to me, it's probably the most classic out of all of, of the Rambo films. And it's not really even much of an action film. It's more of actually like a drama about this sort of Vietnam vet coming back, trying to, you know, say his goodbyes to, you know, one of his former army people who passed on, I believe. And... The sheriff just continues to fuck with the guy. I mean, I, honestly, he's just trying to pass through town, and the guy's fucking with him, and it's just like he bargained with way more than he could have ever thought. And, man, it's such a really great movie, dude. It really is. And then and then you kind of get to Rambo... Then you kind of get to Rambo Part 2, and then, like, Part 3, and they're very much, like, full-on 80s action movies, like, 80s access, like, so much, like gore and blood and ridiculous kills and the body counts and all like massive man and it was such a especially those two were so different movies from where the first blood movie was almost like a completely different franchise but stallone owns those roles i mean i like part two more than i like part three like, part three is way more ridiculous and a little bit over the top. Like, part two, well, part two is just crazy ridiculous anyways, but I like the story a little bit more in that one, so it's a little bit better. And then after part three, I mean, part three didn't do so hot at the box office, unfortunately, so kind of, like, stopped for a while. And then they did Rambo, baby. Rambo. He was back, man. I believe it was, like, fighting... The soldiers in Burma, I believe he was, man. And let me tell you something, man. The uh, I'm telling you, I didn't go see it in the theater. And the reason why I even saw it was my friend John literally came to me and said, Dude, you have to watch this movie. It is brutal. Like, it is the most brutal Rambo movie you have ever seen. And I'm like, I'm like, come on, how old is fucking Stallone? And he's, he's, he's brutal as old Rambo. Come on, get, 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 get the fuck out of here, man. And honestly... I'm so glad that I took John's advice because Rambo in in the fourth one is the best Rambo. Like, I, he is mowing down motherfuckers constantly, man. I mean, especially the last, I don't know, last half hour, I mean, minutes or something. Like, my God, it's like a full-on kill fest. I mean, it, it's fucking ridiculous, man. I mean, he's literally, like, practically ripping spines out of people. He's, he's on that turret gun. He's like... And he's like, he's like, he's like, Arr! 
and he's and he's just like ripping people in half, man, with like the the bullets. I'm like, my God, man, it's it's so amazing, man. It's it's really fantastic. It's an awesome mo movie, and it was like it, it was like I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like like in heaven, like it was the best Rambo film of all time, man. And I thought it was gonna end there because at the end of the last one, he actually kind of came home. Which I thought, okay, kind of is fitting. He's back home now after, you know, couldn't really go home at the beginning of the, the, the first film. And he didn't really have a place to call his, his own. And now he's back. Kind of felt fitting. And then they ended up doing the last Rambo film, which is called The Last Blood. And I wasn't... I, I didn't outright hate the movie, but I'm not... I didn't outright love it. I just kind of felt like Rambo was, especially after like the the last one, like him being badass. I felt he was kind of like a a pussy a little bit. I mean, not that he was bad or anything, but it's like I felt like I mean he was going up against the Mexican cartel, which I felt was kind of actually an interesting take of like Rambo going up against the cartel. Like they didn't really know what they were up against, and then. And then he kind of he's kind of out of out of like shape, and they, they they beat the shit out of him, and then sort of he's like okay, he comes back to be an old Rambo. He's he's building these tunnels. He's killing these people. It's like mass mass death all over the place, and I like some of the death scenes, especially like the end for the main bad guy. I think he, if I'm not mistaken, I think he pulls the heart out. He rips his heart out or something. And I'm like, okay, that's that. That's a really great Rambo kill. Okay, I'll give him that, man. You know, but I felt the movie was kind of lackluster for a Rambo film, to be honest with you. Mind you, I didn't see the unrated cut, and I kind of probably have to rewatch that Ram Rambo film to kind of maybe see if I truly, you know, what I truly think about it. But I just felt like it was kind of lacking to me, especially for, like, the last Rambo film. But, you know, with these with these franchises and everything, uh, the end is not truly the end, as you guys very well know. But I think for me, like, if I had to rank them, I would be, like, Rambo, then I would be First Blood, then I would be First Blood Part 2, then I would be Rambo 3, and then Rambo Last Blood. That's where my head is at. I don't know what you guys think. Definitely let me know. But this is an amazing box set. Oh my god. Look at this thing. This thing is fucking killer, guys. Holy shit, man. The artwork on here is amazing. Like I said, it's a tin set. So it looks amazing, man. I love the designs on here. And again, you get all of these really great steals right, right here, man. And I've seen the design of them. I've seen them online. And the design of all the steelbooks is amazing. It looks fantastic, man. It looks absolutely stunning. This is, this is amazing. It truly, honestly is, man. If you're a Rambo fan, this is honestly a must-buy. They're all in 4K. comes with all the special features previously. Uh, delete a scenes, feature ads, audio commentary, all that jazz. It, it's, oh my god, man, this thing is fucking amazing. Oh my god, dude. Like, if every franchise got the treatment of, like, the Steelbook treatment, that would be amazing. I mean, for 95 bucks, it seems like a lot, but you're getting five movies, they're all in 4K, they're all exclusive Best Buy Steelbooks, and you get all the special features as well. So really, $95 is really not bad honestly if you truly think about it not bad at all man this thing is oh my god dude I, this this thing is making me wet <laughs> literally it is and i i oh my god man this is amazing for a stallone fan for a rambo fan this has got to be one of the biggest must buys i've ever seen in my life man oh my god dude rambo stallone Deal book, baby. And then I'm seeing over here they have the Blu-ray digital of Friendsgiving for $14.99. Oh, boy. Oh, okay, so look, I watched this on Amazon Prime. Now, I actually wasn't really looking forward to watching this thing only because, you know, from the trailer and, and everything, it kind of looked schmaltzy and over-the-top and ridiculous and... 
uh, very disposable, and I'm like, oh, my God, do I, do I really have to watch this? Now, now, to be fair, I didn't have to watch it. Okay, guys, I didn't have to. I watched it because, well, it was one of the bigger releases of the week, and I figured might as well give it a shot so I can talk about it for you guys. And like I said, I was prepared to really not like this. I, I mean, truth be told, there is some really good actors in here. I mean, Malin Ackerman, Kat Dennings, Aisha Taylor, Chris, Christine Taylor, um, Jane Seymour. I mean, there is some really good people. Wanda Sykes, Margaret Cho. I mean, there is good people here. So it's not like there's really bad actors in here exactly. It just kind of felt probably like it was just going to not be something that I would like. But after watching this, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really like this movie. I know you guys are thinking, really? He likes Friendsgiving? But truth be told, I actually really do, man. And you thought family was complicated. Yeah. Okay, so basically what this movie is about is it's about... It's about these two friends, Malin Ackerman and Kat Dennings, who are in different opposite parts of their lives... You know, one has a kid, and another one is out of a relationship, and they both have had a lot of hardships and trying to bounce back on, on things in life. And they figure, we're going to have a really great Thanksgiving together with friends and, and loved ones, and we're going to make it a really good time. And it turns into a complete and utter chaotic Thanksgiving full of just wild hijinks that end up happening. Okay, so look... With a premise like that, you think, okay, this is just... It's just going to be like a schmaltzy, girly movie. It's not going to be really all that funny. It's just going to be kind of over the top and really just painfully unfunny and painfully disposable. But honest with you guys, honestly, the movie... It really did surprise me, man. I thought it was really funny. I thought the acting was really well done. I liked the hijinks. And I really like the relationship with the characters. Because it took their time with them. And I think that's why some of the funny moments actually work. Because you get to know these characters. You get to know their situations. You get to understand why they do what they do. And... And it just seems to get more crazy and more ridiculous the more you go along with it. It's just one thing on top of another. Oh, okay, her crazy mother is there. And then her and then her, her weird ex that wants her back. And then her sort of fling that she's dealing with. It's suddenly like, like this crazy weird hippie. And then Kat Dennings is trying to go on these dates with these girls during Thanksgiving. And, and just trying to refine love again. And... And it's just sort of these complicated situations that just keep getting wilder and more ridiculous the longer the movie goes on. But the friendship is really great between those two. It really is. And you feel the friendship. You feel that, that they're like family. And it all works, man. It all really honestly works. And I was surprised. Man, seriously, like, I, I went into this movie thinking this is going to be, like, some really romantic, disposable piece of trash. And it was anything but. I actually really enjoyed the movie. I thought, like I said, the actors were really, really funny. They were relatable. I think the comedy works. I think the friendship works. I think the dramatic elements do. I think you feel for, for the characters. It surprised me. It really did. I mean, look, I don't like a lot of these schmaltzy movies. Okay, to be fair, I really don't. I mean, some of them I do like. Like, a movie like Steel Magnolias, I really enjoy. I think Steel Magnolias is actually really a great, great, warm-hearted movie. Really well done. The comedy works, the friendships, everything does really well, well with that movie. And then you have a movie like Bad Moms. Or Bad Mom's Christmas. Or the, those movies are not terrible, but to me, I, I wasn't really into them. I thought this was going to be more like a Bad Mom situation or something. But to be real with you guys, this actually was much better than that. And I'm not saying all of you are going to go out and watch this movie or even, or even be interested in it. But for something for maybe like the ladies out there or for your girlfriends or if you just want a really nice little friendship style romantic movie 
uh, with a little comedy mixed in, Friendsgiving is actually pretty darn good. And when I started the movie, I really wasn't thinking it was going to be like that, but I guess that's why you give m movies a chance, because you never quite know what you're going to watch. Hmm. And honestly, surprise, surprise, surprise. And actually, another big surprise here is Kat Dennings. I actually really like Kat Dennings in here. And I know a lot of people like her from uh, the Thor movies or Two Broke Girls. Uh, truth be told, I've never really seen any of the Two Broke Girls show. But I did really like her in a movie that I don't know many people really know much about. And that is Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Which is a really fantastic movie. Really well well done. I really like that, that flick. She's cool in there. She, she's always sort of been the side chick. She hasn't really been most of like the, the leading lady. But here she's very relatable and funny. And I think she does a good job in here, man. It's really, it's really good. Surprise, surprise of all things, man. Friendsgiving. Who, who'd have thought? And then I'm also seeing they have the Blu-ray DVD digital of My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising. And the exclusive Best Buy Steelbook for $27.99 here. Now, mind you, I've told you guys before, I don't really know much about anime, but I want to show it off to you guys just in case you're into them so that you guys know they're out there. I've heard of My Hero Academia. I've heard of the title, but I've never actually seen anything about it. The number one hero anime that shook the box office. Really? That shook the box office? Even during coronavirus? Hmm, okay, maybe it came out a long ways before then. I don't know. Five villains say people win together. I mean, it kind of looks cool. Again, I... A anime is not really my forte, but my girlfriend is sort of urging me to get into it more, and she has suggested stuff, and... She's kind of even hinted that she might bring stuff over for like a movie night. So I'm like, okay, I guess I guess I guess I'm gonna get on the train one way or another. But okay, and actually the steelbook kind of, actually kind of kind of looks cool too. Hmm. Yeah. Again, not my thing. But uh, eventually, I have a feeling I'm gonna get into it more and more, guys. Trust me, I have a surefire feeling about it. But honestly, not bad this week. I mean, some exclusive steelbook love. I mean, hello, Rambo. This thing looks amazing, my god, man, so amazing. And finally seeing Friendsgiving. I mean, the other places were a complete bust, but finally Best Buy at least delivered. And that's not half bad. All right, thank god we found something to show off. Let's head out. I mean, honestly, we really did save the best for the last, man. We really did because we didn't really find much anywhere else. So this is, was, well, literally our last stand. I was like, this is our last stand. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was ready to charge in here like, like a general. Da, 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 da. I don't like thinking like, okay, this better have some media to show off, man. Really, like, oh God, hope so. And they actually did. Thank the Lord. It is a slow release week, okay. And most of this stuff probably is more online than it is in store. So I was just like, oh my god, and, and it really is true, like, there was not much to show off this week at all, man. And at least Best Buy delivered, it's the beast, the beast comes through, nine times out of ten the beast comes through for, for me, it really does. And this week, boy, they definitely delivered, seeing that Back to the Future Steelbook set, seeing the Rambo Steelbook collection, that is amazing man and seeing a couple of the new releases as well not half bad man not bad this week i mean well actually it is pretty bad let's, let's be real man uh, not much to show off but here delivered finally thank god we saw something and uh not half bad always happy for best buy man always always ha happy man always delivered for me thank the lord <laughs> All right, man, uh, at least something redeemed this video. How about we head home and finish the video? All right, everybody, that'll do it for the Blu-ray and DVD out and about video this week. And oh man, that was rough. <laughs> wow, 
That was really, really rough, guys, and I apologize, and, and, and I know what you guys are going to say, because, well, Seth, it's not your fault, and, you know, you could have never known, and, and this is true, I just, I want to show you guys as much media as humanly possible, and this week, man, was just one hell of a dry spell, and I've always told you guys that there is going to be certain weeks within a month that might be less plentiful than others but my god this week was really bad man and thankfully next week is going to be a little bit of a bounce back there's some really interesting movies worth checking out and talking about and i'm thankful for that but also i'm really thankful that this was really the only really truly slow and not much media to show off week that I've seen in quite a long time. Because, you know, when the coronavirus really started and happened and movie theaters were shut down and there was no media really coming out and I was sitting there thinking to myself, oh my God, we're going to have weeks and weeks and weeks, of long stretches where we're just not going to see any media in any of these stores and there's just going to be nothing to talk about, nothing to show off and you're going to be really huge amounts of dry spells going on and thankfully that was never really the case because there was always something unique always some interesting indie titles or some straight to streaming thing that finally hit on physical media and there's always something unique to show off and that was a really great thing that I loved to see the, and, and it was a really great gift for physical media l lovers because you know you almost felt like you were ready for physical media to practically die at that point and this is really the first week at least for me in a long time where I felt like I could really feel the influence of the pandemic and not much media to show off really finally hitting these stores and it was just it was just a barren week man it really was i mean mind you there was still stuff that came out but not really much within the stores and that was a real shame i mean i'm just thankful that there will be a bounce back and i'm just thankful that this is one week out of many many weeks where we could have seen literally no media whatsoever so if it's a really slow and not much media show off week. Hey, I'll take it because it could have been, honestly, over these past weeks, much, much worse. So, it was rough, but it could have been way rougher, man. But I hope you guys picked up something good this week. I mean, like I said, there was stuff that came out, but not exactly in the store. So, if you found something good, definitely let me know, man. And as far as I'm concerned, well, I got a few packages in the mail, man. And the first package that I got is actually one from Diabolic DVD. Yes, they, they love me. What can I tell you? <laughs> this is actually a underwater horror flick. Now, it's actually a horror flick that I know about. I've heard of it. I know the name. I've seen the trailer. I've even seen maybe a little bit of bits and pieces of it. But I've never actually seen the full thing, and I've even referenced it in, in previous videos. And it's, it's, it's one that is in the same vein as something like Leviathan, or even uh, the recent Underwater. Like some really, really great underwater horror flicks that are out there, and this is among them that people really talk about. It just came out in a like great collector's edition release and I was like you know what I'm gonna give this thing a chance man put it in the collection I love some great underwater horror so this is right up my alley man so I'm definitely looking forward to ch checking this bad boy out man and then the next thing I got was actually Royal Mail uh UK Royal Mail and from 101 Films great company I bought stuff from them in the past and this is another underwater horror flick. Can you kind of see the theme a little bit, man? I think you probably can. Now, this is not like the previous one that I got from Diabolic, because this is actually quite different. It's not really any sort of monster or entity or anything. It's actually basically about, you know, sex, 
money, greed, and murder, all wrapped up into one. And I've heard about this movie, I've just never actually seen it. And it came out not too long back in a great edition by 101 Films, and I figured, why the hell not, man? I mean, it looks really cool, I, I love the trailer, and on top of that, man, some really great big stars that were really young back in the day. So, it's a nice little interesting underwater horror flick, man. Not bad. Again, definitely give this one a chance. And last, but certainly not least, a package from Ronin Flicks. Now, this is not an underwater horror flick. I know, I, it's not three for three. It's, you know, it's only two for three. But this is actually one of the more recent horror flicks to come out in the last like, year or so. And I remember when this got released and I was talking about it during the Out and About that week that it came out, I really loved it and I praised this movie because I thought it was a really awesome new age horror flick that really needed to be seen. And when it came out, it only came out in DVD. And I really loved the movie and I thought, well, should I buy the DVD or should I wait for maybe in some future time period that there was actually going to be a Blu-ray and I decided to wait thinking that okay I'm probably going to wait forever because there's probably never going to be a Blu-ray of this considering that there's a lot of horror flicks that are on DVD that never come on Blu-ray but that wasn't the case because Ronin Flicks actually saved it from just being on DVD into Blu-ray an exclusive Blu-ray and I had to get it man because I really love this flick it's it's a really great sort of um clown haunted house flick and i just really ate this up i loved it i thought it was really brutal i thought it was atmospheric creepy and everything i wanted out of a horror flick and it really is one of the better modern ones that i've seen in a while and so i definitely wanted to finally get on blu-ray and my wish was finally granted so i got that some interesting sort of clownish haunted house flick. Um, an interesting uh, money, drug, sex, murder, underwater horror, and a monster underwater horror flick. Ah, very interesting, very nice. The last three pickups for the month of October. But you guys are not going to find out exactly what I picked up until my Blu-ray pickup video, which will drop next month it'll show off all of the titles that i picked up for the month of october and i gotta admit to you guys this is october is great man i mean i picked up some really awesome flicks man uh collector's editions limited editions exclusives out of print love retro titles 80s 90s 70s uh, some really great flicks, man. I found some stuff, you know, Region B in the UK, stuff here in the States. Um, some oddball titles, man. I, I always pick up some interesting stuff. October is no exception, man. So definitely stay tuned to that. And also, within the next, I would say, two or three weeks, I will also be putting out my September Blu-ray pickup video. That is coming right around the corner as well. So give it another two or three weeks. You'll definitely see that video. And also, getting back into a little bit of movie review love on a live-action Disney flick that um, we've been meaning to review for a while now. So uh, there is some more videos coming. And also, by the way... We did put out our really fantastic Halloween Horror Movie Playlist Part 2 video where we dived into yet another video where we picked 10 horror flicks each, start the day with, to end the night with, and all the horror goodness in between. Me, John Van, we did a really great uh, horror movie playlist video. It's on the channel now. We had a blast filming it. And some of you guys have said how much you've really loved the, the video. And thank you so much. We, we had a ball making it. And if you haven't checked that video out, definitely do it, guys. Uh, it was really, really fun. So there is definitely some content on the way. And uh, some, some good things are coming. And before I let you guys go, I wanted to talk about something that was really big news over the end of last week, throughout the weekend. 
I want to thank one of my subscribers for bringing it to my attention, Big Polly. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. He first told me, but then I saw so many news articles through Facebook about it that I was like, wow, this is kind of nutty and crazy, and I can't believe that it was even being considered. So, there was a news story that came out that basically, uh, the next Bond movie, No Time to Die, was being shopped around on streaming services. Like, seriously, was being shopped around, man. Uh, there was this huge bidding war, uh, Netflix and Apple TV and God knows how many other streaming services was literally, literally vying for this movie. I heard the figure was somewhere up above like $600 million, maybe more. And I was like, oh my God, like literally they're, they're thinking of bringing Bond to streaming? Wow, I was shocked. I mean, thankfully, they sort of backtracked and was like, oh no, we're going to put it in a movie theaters. We're, we're not going straight to streaming. But just the possibility of it was wild. And I think a lot of people said, and I truly agree with them, that if Bond were to have gone to a streaming service, doesn't matter what it was, Apple TV or Netflix or Hulu, uh, y you name it, didn't matter, wherever it went, if that were to have happened, that would have been the end of cinema as we know it. That would have been the end of movie theaters, the end of the experience, done. Because if Bond can go to a streaming service, then anything can happen. And... You know, I thought about this, and I said, well, even the fact that it was even talked about, even the fact that the company was shopping the film around, really tells you something. Honestly, really does, guys. Because, yes, you know, there's going to be a lot of these articles written about, oh, well, they were never going to actually do it, and, of course, it's going to go to theaters, and it's going to save the theater industry. But I don't know how many articles are being written about the fact that, that, it was being considered is truly an indicator of how bad the movie theater industry is right now and how badly it really is hurting. The fact that the studio decided that they are going to to try to take a gamble on streaming over movie th theaters and that they could get a wider audience and, and a better push for their movie through that format? Boy, that says a lot, man. That, that really does... Because think about it this way, okay? Think about this, right? So when the the pandemic was really starting to happen and all of these, you know, uh, movies were starting to move to different dates, you had Trolls World Tour that Universal decided that they're going to put it directly on streaming. They're not going to, they're not going to move the release date to another time frame. They're just going to release it. And if you remember, they had all of those movie theaters and the movie theater association. They were just like, oh, we are going to get Universal. We're going to get those those P people. I can't believe that they screwed us over. And, you know, they're supposed to be nice to us and everything like that. And it was, it, it was an all-out frenzy against Universal. And they released it on streaming services. And guess what? It actually made a decent amount of money. It actually did. And Universal was shocked, and a lot of these movie critics and people were shocked that they actually made a decent chunk of change through streaming services. And, you know, Universal was praising that and saying, hey, we made a decent amount of money. And, you know, they got to have entertainment at home, and it worked out well. And then others followed. You had Scoob that went to, to streaming services. And Scoob didn't do too bad. And... And they did all right. And so, okay, it's not completely bad. I mean, it's not great money, but it's not it's not bad. Then you had other heavy hitters. You had Bill and Ted Face the Music go on streaming services, and they did really well through streaming. They The, the numbers are really good for them. You also have Mulan, that big, great, uh, you know, live-action Disney remake that came onto the streaming service. That was a huge gamble. 
Because when Disney did that, that was basically like a huge like shot, gunshot, right to the chest of movie theaters. Basically, they were like, they were like, they were gunning. They were saying, look, we're going to put out a big movie that could have been good in movie theaters, but you know what, since we've got our own streaming service, why, why are we going to, why are we going to fuck with you when we could fuck with our own streaming service and still make money and get 100% of the profits? Just makes kind of sense, right? And even though we'll never know the exact complete numbers on what Mulan made, I can only guess that they probably made a decent chunk of change on that. Truth be told. Could they have made more through movie theaters? Maybe, but because we're living in the world of COVID and the coronavirus and, you know, there's such unknown stuff going on with movie theaters, Disney said, we're just not going to do it, man. And now Disney is moving Soul, that animated movie, to Disney+. Plus. And there's other movies that have followed the streaming service sort of rules and have, you know, tried their hand at it. Movies like Antebellum and other films as well. And but Bond, man, Bond, the fact that Bond was even considering it says a lot about movie theaters. It says that, that the confidence in movie theaters is just not there, man. It literally is just not there. There is no confidence in them. Not not at this point, man. There really isn't. Now, what's interesting is that actually some movie theaters have actually opened in New York State. Our governor has finally given permission to a lot of these movie theaters to start to open up. So uh, a couple of Regals opened up. Um, uh, you know, I, I have a movie tavern in my area that opened up as well. But what's interesting is there was a news crew that went the first couple days to the Regal and what they found was that uh, the majority of movie theaters in in the big sort of movie theater complex that is in sort of the mall that I usually go to, most of those were empty. And the ones that did have people either had one to four people in there and that's it. That is it guys. Literally, there right now is not the demand to go to the movie theaters like people think there is. All these movie studios right now are hoping, literally hoping, beyond hope, that, that there will be a demand come spring of next year or summer of next year for these movies. Because if not, what are these movie studios going to do? I mean, seriously, moving Black Widow, moving the next Fast and the Furious movie, uh, you know, moving all of these other movies, uh, Quiet Place Part 2, uh, Top Gun Maverick, uh, and many, many others to next year, shooing sh them to next year because they're, they, they realize, my God, we, we, we can't open it now. We can't, we can't put any movies out right now in, in, in theaters. There's not uh, as many open right now. And there's no demand to go. We're, we're not seeing the numbers we want to see. So literally, they're stuck. They are literally stuck. They don't know what to do. And so they're just hoping that, that the coronavirus and the fears will actually be subsided by springtime or summer to get the customer confidence back. And that's what movie theaters are hoping too. Because let, let me tell you something. If we're still in in late spring, early summer, still very worried about this pandemic, and still are in the in the throes of like wanting to stay home and wanting to quarantine and and not wanting to go out places, it doesn't matter how good the movies are. They're just not going. People are not not going to go. And so, what does that mean for movie studios? That means looking for different avenues to put their movies out and there's only one option really and that's streaming and movie theaters are worried they're desperate and they know that that their success is only based on controlling the virus at this point and customer confidence and if they can't get those two correct then they're done and streaming is literally coming in the side saying, saying, whispering in these studios there saying, hey, by the way, you know, people are home 
and they can stream stuff. They have big TVs and good sound systems and they don't need the movie theaters and just give your movies to us. Sell them to us. You'll still may, may, make the profit and we make profit and people still get to see your, your movies. It's a win-win. Movie theaters are in a tough jam, man, and they, they are in dire need. And seeing Bond being this close to going to a streaming service says a lot more about the dire need that's going on with movie theaters than it does anything else. It really does. I, I Definitely let me know what you guys think. I'm dying to know, man. Very curious on that one. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, let me know if you got, if you got any pickups. And I appreciate every single one of you subscribing to the channel. If you like what you see, definitely hit subscribe and become part of the Film Fan Nation. And keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. Alright guys, I will see you back next week for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out in Bellevue. Take care everybody, and happy hunt.